from a life on a dime and welcome back to the channel if you're new here hi and welcome if you haven't already please take a second to click that subscribe button and ding the bell so you get notifications of new videos when they come out every week today I'd like to talk to you about setting a survival budget I think it's really important and considering the way the economy and the ongoing pandemic have been I think it's a really timely topic. So today we're going to be talking about how to set a survival budget. So let's get to it. So maybe you've been laid off before, maybe you're currently laid off, or maybe you just realized you need to beef up your emergency fund just in case, just because of the way the economy is right now in the ongoing pandemic. Setting a survival budget can help you determine how long your current emergency fund will cover your expenses and help you figure out how much money you need to save to cover the recommended minimum of three to six months of expenses. So first off, what is a survival budget? A survival budget is exactly what it sounds like. A budget that only covers what is necessary for, well, survival. It is a bare bones budget. There are no frills, no Netflix, no nights out on the town, no soda, no alcohol, just the basics. In order to survive, you need food, shelter, and probably to keep the lights on. You also need transportation. It'll come in handy for job interviews or if you need to get to the doctor. So what you need to do first is sit down and list your recurring monthly payments. Housing, food, utilities, transportation, and minimum debt payments. So when it comes to housing, this is just what it sounds like. It is your mortgage or your rent. And this may be a good opportunity to look at your current rent or your mortgage payment and see how feasible long-term this is. Or if you're in a good financial position right now, check into refinancing. The rates are low. If you can lock in a lower interest rate, even get a shorter term mortgage, it'll be worth it in the long run. So when it comes to food, this is not a gourmet cuisine budget. This is frozen vegetables, cooking from scratch, cutting out all the extras that you might normally splurge on. You're going to go for as much nutrition as you can get out of a dollar. Cheap food isn't necessarily healthy food, so you need to choose wisely. My family of four can eat quite healthy from scratch on a $400 a month budget if we watch it very closely. It's not what we're doing right now, but we can do it. Utilities. You need to keep the lights on, obviously. And if you're anywhere like where we are, it's hot right now. You really want to keep the AC running, just keep the thermostat on schedule. Um, if you can, shop around for utility providers. Save money now, and it'll make a huge difference later. We're not in a position to shop around for utility providers, but if you are, it's definitely worth checking into because you can save quite a bit of money. So like I said, we can't shop around for our utilities here, but we do try to be as energy efficient as possible. We built as energy efficient as we could afford. And not only is it better for our pocketbook, it's better for the environment in the long run because we're using fewer resources. Next is transportation. You need a reliable way to get to job interviews, go to the grocery store, and if necessary, get to the doctor. Um, you don't have to do this in style. You don't have to do it in a glamorous fashion. If public transportation is available, and a more affordable option, you may need to use it if you're relying on your survival budget only. Do a cost comparison now and evaluate your options. It may help to shop around different insurance rates and see if you can save money now because it's going to benefit you whether or not you have to rely on a survival budget. It's going to save you money every month. Okay, if you're rolling around in too much car for your current budget, you best believe it'll be way too much for your survival budget. So figure this out now and you'll save yourself the hassle of a repo later. The next thing is health insurance. Um, you may be perfectly healthy and able to handle a small lapse in your insurance between jobs, but that's not the case for everybody. So research your options and look at how much COBRA would be from your current job on your current benefits. If you can't handle not having insurance, you need to factor that into your survival budget amount. Next up is to add up your minimum debt payment. Make a plan now to knock out your smaller debt as quickly as you can and stop accumulating debt now. 
This will help your survival budget and keep it much simpler. Ditch as much debt now and your survival budget numbers will be much more manageable. So you've added all these amounts up between your housing, your food costs, your utilities, your transportation, insurance, and minimum debt payments. This amount is your survival budget. It's what it takes a month for you to survive. You want your emergency fund to last you six months? Multiply your survival budget amount by six and then add in a small buffer. Now you have your savings goal. And maybe you even have a new plan to knock out your debt because you just reevaluated that situation. So this will definitely save you money in the long run whether or not you have to use the survival budget now. Let's do a practical example using family of four. Their mortgage payment is $1,100 a month. Minimum debt payments total $650 a month. Food, they average about $450. They're already pretty frugal there. Utilities, about $175. And transportation, including insurance and fuel, usually runs them about $285 a month. Their survival budget is $2,660. So their monthly survival budget total is $2,660. A healthy three-month emergency fund would be $7,980. I'm going to round that up to $8,000 to give them a small buffer. A six-month emergency fund would be about $15,960. I'm going to round that up to $16,000 to give them a small buffer. Obviously, if they knock out some or all of their debt, their expenses go down by as much as $650 a month. This is a big savings goal, but definitely a necessary one. And speaking from experience, once you hit that first three months emergency fund total, it gives you the momentum to keep going and it doesn't seem like it's such a chore after that. Um, maybe get the first three months saved as quickly as possible. Put savings on autopilot while you focus on debt payoff. You're still saving money every month and by paying down your debt monthly, it will take less money to cover your minimum monthly expenses in your survival budget, as well as your regular day-to-day -day budget. Once you get that debt knocked out, as long as you don't accumulate any more, you have more money in your budget and more money to save and invest. So that's how you set your survival budget. Um, for more information on emergency funds or budgeting in general, you can check the links down in the description and I'll have more information there. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Um, thank you so much for watching. Stay frugal and get that survival budget number set. I'll see you later. Bye.